Welcome to the STEMI ECG module developed by Drs. Nyack and Choi. During the next few minutes, we will go over the criteria for ST Elevation MI, and you will practice using those criteria on several ECGs in order to recognize those ones that involve patients having an active MI. An ST Elevation MI is a clinical syndrome defined by characteristic symptoms of myocardial ischemia in association with persistent electrocardiographic ST elevation and subsequent release of biomarkers of myocardial necrosis. ST elevation is the single best immediately available surrogate marker for detecting acute complete coronary artery occlusion without collateral circulation, signifying a significant region of injured myocardium at imminent risk of irreversible infarction requiring immediate reperfusion therapy. Now we will go over what is meant by contiguous leads. These are limb leads looking at the same area of the heart or numerically consecutive precordial leads. For the inferior wall, this encompasses leads 2, 3, and AVF. The anterior wall is leads V1, V2, V3, and V4. The lateral wall is seen in leads 1, AVL, V5, and V6. The posterior wall is seen in leads V7, V8, and V9. Now we will go over several EKGs to see if these EKGs meet the criteria for ST elevation. In the first scenario, we have a 43-year-old male with hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and active tobacco abuse who started having substernal chest pain about one hour ago. Please pause the video at this point to look over the EKG. The answer to this EKG is that there are three millimeters of ST elevation in contiguous leads 2, 3, and AVF with reciprocal changes in 1, V2, V1, V2, AVL, and AVR. The patient went to the cath lab and was found to have an occluded RCA. It was felt to be the culprit of this patient's ST elevation MI. Case 2 is a 73-year-old male with a past medical history of chronic kidney disease, COPD, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, who had bladder cancer and underwent a cystectomy. The patient had bradycardia during the surgery and an EKG was done. Please pause the video at this point to review the EKG. This EKG does show a real ST elevation MI. The patient had complete heart block with ST elevation in leads 2, 3, and AVF 
and thus the patient had an inferior ST elevation MI. The patient was STEMI alerted, and a left heart cast showed an RCA, which was occluded in the mid-distal segment. The patient had a successful drug looting stent place placement with re resolution of his ST elevation MI. Here are two angiograms from the patient in case two. The angiogram on the left shows the RCA being occluded in the mid-distal segment. The patient then had successful drug eluting stent placement with good results post-PCI seen in the angiogram on the right. Here's case 5, a 64-year-old who was status post a bilateral lung transplant. He was STEMI alerted based on an EKG read that showed an infralateral infarct. Please pause the video at this point to review the EKG. This EKG demonstrates the need to understand STEMI criteria. While the computer is often correct, in many cases it is also not. Upon careful review of this EKG, ST elevation is noted on all leads but AVR, in which there is ST depression, which again is much more suggestive of pericarditis. Case 6 involves a 40-year-old female with a past medical history of hypertension and hyperlipidemia, who presented for an evaluation of chest pain, described as chest pressure with 10 out of 10 severity. Please pause the video at this point to review the EKG. This EKG shows ST elevation in the precordial leads V1 to V5 with ST depression in the inferior leads. This patient was STEMI alerted and taken to the cath lab. A left heart cath showed a high degree stenosis of the mid LED, which was likely the culprit of her anterior STEMI. Here are two angiograms from the patient in case six. The angiogram on the left shows a 75 to 95% narrowing in the mid LED that is the likely cause of the patient's anterior STEMI. This lesion completely resolved with intracoronary nitroglycerin as seen on the right. Case 7. A 56-year-old male admitted for evaluation of a left buttock abscess and necrotizing soft tissue infection, who was STEMI alerted. Please take time now to review the EKG below. This patient does have ST elevation in lead V3 and a small amount of ST elevation in lead 4, but is less than 2 millimeters and therefore does not meet STEMI criteria. Therefore, the STEMI alert was canceled. Case 8. 
A 49-year-old female with past medical history of end-stage renal disease, diabetes, factor 7 deficiency, pulmonary embolisms in the past, who was on Coumadin therapy, who presented with severe left-sided chest pressure. Please take time now to review the EKG below. This EKG shows ST elevation and leads V2 through V4, and the patient was diagnosed with an ST elevation MI. She was taken to the cath lab and found to have high-grade high mid-LAD stenosis and had a stent placed. Case 9. A 55-year-old male with uncontrolled diabetes mellitus type 2, asthma, and chronic low back pain presented with chest pressure. Please pause the video now to review the EKG below. This patient had an initial EKG and troponins that were unremarkable. The patient was then admitted for an evaluation of chest pain. However, his repeat EKG, which is shown here, clearly demonstrates ST elevations in leads V1 through V4 with reciprocal ST depressions in leads 2, 3, and AVF, which show a true ST elevation MI. He was STEMI alerted and taken to the cath lab, where a left heart cast showed an occluded proximal LAD as the STEMI culprit. Here's an old comparison EKG for this patient. As you can see, the ST segment changes appear unchanged overall. The patient was diagnosed with a COPD exacerbation and the STEMI alert was canceled. Case 11. An 88-year-old female with a recent small bowel obstruction, a status post-colectomy, with a past medical history of COPD, hypertension, and hyperlipidemia, who had the blow EKG for a potassium of 5.3 and was STEMI alerted. Please pause the video at this time to take time to review the EKG. The computer read here mentions a probable anterior lateral infarct, which prob probably prompted the STEMI alert. The EKG shows an intraventricular conduction delay and left bundle branch block-like appearance. As mentioned previously, new left bundle branch block alone is not a STEMI criteria. The intraventricular conduction delay and left bundle branch block-like appearance could be related to the hyperkalemia in this case. Therefore, the STEMI alert was canceled. Case 12. A 55-year-old male with a past medical history of hypertension and smoking who presented with chest pain the patient was admitted and had the following EKG the next day and was STEMI alerted at that time. Please pause the video at this point to review the EKG. The EKG here shows minimal ST elevation in lead V3 and T wave inversions in the inferior and lateral leads. These do not meet STEMI criteria. The EKG is suggestive of left ventricular hypertrophy, and additionally, the patient's elevated blood pressure at the time the EKG was done, and thus the EKG changes are likely due to repolarization abnormalities. The STEMI alert was canceled.